So here are the Shaw Classic 2021 predictions, starting off with the first event, the Max Log. Adam Bishop will take one point in last place in the Max Log. At World Strongest Man 2021, he had 170 kilo for one out of 10 points. Gabriel Rayom, Canada's Strongest Man 2021, will come away with two and a half points. He had 181 kilo, which was 16 out of 17 points uh, at Canada's Strongest Man in, in the same competition where Maxime did uh, 186 kilos. Gabriel Pena will come away with two and a half points on the max log. Moving up the scale, Kevin Ferris, who at 2020 Shaw Classic did 191 kilos, he will gain six points in a max log this year. Moving on, Jerry Pritchett, who also did 191 kilos at last year's Shaw Classic, will also gain six points. Mikhail Shivlikov at 2019 Wuss Dubai did a 180 kilo for three reps, so I think he'll also split that six points with Jerry and Kevin. Moving up, Ivar Schmockstellis at the World's Strongest Man 2020 Log Ladder had seven out of a possible 10 points. He'll also split that six points this time around. Evan Singleton, I think, also at the same level of max log lift weight. 2021 Giants Live Strongman Classic, he had six and a half out of possible 11 points on the axle. Log is a little different, but I think he does split this six points as well. Moving on up, the return of Big Z to big international competition here. He walks away with 10 and a half points in my estimation. He was 2021 Baltic's Strongest Man, did a 200 kilogram log there so Baltic is not international but you go by the weight of the log for this particular event and moving on up I think Konstantin Janasha splits that 10 and a half points with uh, Big Z he at 2021 World Strongest Man had 195 kilo log which was good enough for mid-pack uh, and then if we move on up JF Perone I think also gets 10 and a half points here he had 195 kilo log as well at World Strongest Man 2021 again mid-pack 5 out of 10 points Last year, Shaw Classic, he was lower, but trending upwards. So 10 and a half points for JF. And I think the host himself, Brian Shaw, walks away also with 10 and a half points on the max log. He did 195 kilos at this year's World's Strongest Man, same as JF and same as Constantine. And at last year's Shaw Classic, he did a 200 kilo log. So maybe he gets up a little bit more for his own competition, a little more psyched and motivated. And that was good for eight out of 10 points last year. So looking for great score for Brian Shaw. Bobby Thompson, I think, comes in at 14 points this time around. He had a 205 kilo log at this year's World's Strongest Man. And then we have Maxime Boudreau, who I think as well also splits that 14 points. Uh, also did a 205 kilo log at this year's World's Strongest Man and did 200 kilos at last year's Shaw Classic. Moving on up toward the very top of the list, Trey Mitchell as well did 205 kilos at this year's World's Strongest Man and 200 at last year's Shaw Classic. And I think he gets 14 points as well. And then we have uh, who I think many people think would be the winner of this event, Graham Hicks. I think he'll walk away with uh, 16 points. He will win this. He is a known log press monster. He's going to win this event. He had 12 out of 12 possible points at 2020 Europe's Strongest Man with a 220 kilo log. I think there's no disputing that. So for those of you watching, I do encourage you to watch this video all the way through so you can see me divulge the podium finishers toward the end. Now moving on to Super Yoke. Coming in last place with one point, Big Z, Zajunas Saviskis, he did at 2018 Wuss Dubai, was last place one out of 12 points in the Super Yoke. Moving on up, Kevin Ferris, I think, will come in with two points. At the last year's Shaw Classic, that's where he was, two out of 10 points. Uh, and even though he did a little better in the 2019 Giants Live North American Open. Next up on the list, we have Maxime Boudreau, who notoriously not as good with Yoke as some of his excellence in some of the other events like uh, the Atlas Stones, for example, and moving events. I think he comes in with three points here. Moving up the list, Bobby Thompson, who at this year's Giants medley that had a Yoke included was four out of 10 points. I think he does the same here, four out of 10 points. I think Ivar Smokstellis comes in next with five points. 2020 World Strongest Man, he was three out of 10 points. Uh, on a 454 kilogram yoke that was part of the Giants medley. Mikhail Shivlikov will get six points on the super yoke this year. Uh, and then moving up, Gabriel Pena will get seven points. He did very, very well at the Arnold Amateur Worlds, 
although they were amateur worlds, so I have him sort of mid-pack here. Trey Mitchell at the 2021 World Strongest Man Giants medley did not do well in the in the yoke, but at last year's Shaw Classic was 6 out of 10, so better than mid-pack there. I think he gets 8 points this year with more competitors than the 10 of last year competing this year. Jerry Pritchett at the 2020 Shaw Classic was 7 out of 10 points, did very well on the yoke, and uh, will again, 9 points for Jerry Pritchett. Moving up the list, Gabriel Rayom, uh, Canada's Strongest Man 2020-21. At Canada's Strongest Man, had 15 out of a possible 17 points on a 415 uh, kilogram yoke, which I think is a little lighter than probably what Brian Shaw will have, but good enough for 10 points in my uh, estimation. Moving on up the list, I think Graham Hicks walks away with 11 points on the super yoke. Brian Shaw, the host, uh, World's Strongest Man 2021 in the Giants medley with 8 out of a possible 10 points. Did incredibly well there. Same thing in last year's Shaw Classic, 8 out of 10 points. I think he walks away with 12 out of a possible 16 here. Very good event for Brian Shaw. Moving up the list, I think Konstantin Janasha edges out Brian with 13 points. At 2021 World's Strongest Man, he was 9 out of 10 points in the medley that included the Super Yoke. JF Caron will gain 14 points here. JF has mentioned to me recently he's at 90% and uh, will compete, so I'm going to give him full benefits of the doubt here and not take the injury into account at all. I think he walks away with 14 points on the Super Yoke. And that leaves Evan Singleton at 15 points, the runner-up in this event. 2019 Giants Live North American Open, he won the yoke and won the show, and he's only been getting better and better since then. All across all the events, his confidence is incredible. I think he walks away with 15 points here. And the winner of the Super Yoke, um, the the winner of that medley in 2020, World's Strongest Man, Adam Bishop. I think Adam Bishop, uh, especially if it's just a yoke and you take any other medley out of it, he's very, very difficult to beat. And so there are your finishers for the Super Yoke of the Shaw Classic 2021. Now on to the bag toss over bar. I did want to take a quick second to thank you for dropping by because I know all of you come to this channel where you want the full breakdown and research of every point on every event for every competitor, unlike you get on other channels. So thanks again for dropping by. Now on to the bag over bar. So bag toss over bar, I think Bobby Thompson comes in last place here at World's Strongest Man 2021. He was four points out of 10 on the keg toss just a different kind of mix and field of competitors here. Jerry Pritchett has struggled as well in World's Strongest Man with keg toss and keg and bag a little bit different. Keg's a little more solid uh, without the floppy handles, but the best comparison. So Jerry comes away with two points here. Kevin Ferris, I think, uh, will come away with three points. 2020 World's Strongest Man, he was four out of 10 points there. And Graham Hicks, I think, will walk away with four points. So at 2020 Europe's Strongest Man in the keg toss, he was a little less than midfield there. Adam Bishop, I think, will walk away with five points here. World's Strongest Man 2021 keg toss this year, he was four out of a possible 10 points, although that one was for height. Big Z, no recent research on his ability for keg toss. I have him about mid-pack, a little bit less. Six points for him. JF Corona, I think, uh, he had four out of 10 points at the World's Strongest Man 2021 keg uh, for max height, so he'll have seven points here. Konstantin Janasha was seven out of 10 points again, that was Max Height. I think he might do a little better there than a speed event like this, which is why I don't have him higher up on the list. Eight points for Konstantin. Mikhail Shiblikov has proven his worth over and over again with keg tosses and toss over high bars in the past. I think he walks away with nine points. Gabriel Pena was second to Trey Mitchell at Texas Strongest Man, uh, and they, they both put on quite a show there. And Trey did poorly at World Strongest Man this year for Max Height, but when you have something keg or bag over a high bar for speed, I think he really shines, and I think Gabe is pretty close behind him. So 10 points for Gabriel Pena. 11 points I'm giving to Gabriel Rayom, uh, 2021 Canada's Strongest Man, who did very well, 14 out of 17 points on a keg run at this year's Canada's Strongest Man in the same contest where Maxime Boudreau was 17. He won the event. So that's how you can kind of uh, put them against each other here and judge. 12 points will go to Trey Mitchell, the aforementioned Texas Strongest Man, who was throwing them off the picture on the screen. Unbelievable. I think 13 points will go to Maxime Boudreau, who at uh, World's Strongest Man 2021 had eight and a half out of a possible 10 points on the keg for Max. I think he was actually tied with Tom Stoltman, Constantine, and Brian for a new world record at one point until Brian rebroke it. Ivar Smokstellis will gain 14 points here. He had seven out of 10 at World's Strongest Man 2020. 
And then you have Evan Singleton, who, when training with Brian Shaw going into this year's World's Strongest Man, looked really close to Brian's ability, and Brian is otherworldly with keg toss. So I have Evan as the runner-up here, 15 points. So who's going to win the keg toss? Well, it's the host himself, Brian Shaw. So I found it really interesting that Brian made this a, uh, sorry, a bag over bar instead of a keg toss because he is so well known and a world record holder in keg for max. So one would think, oh, well, he'll make it easy on himself. Well, no, he, he made the event bag over bar to give everybody a fair shot. I think he still wins it, um, but very interesting. And, in, um, you know, uh, I don't know what the word is. Like, I, I uh, honor him for, for going that way. So that's the lineup for the bag over bar. They are bags of increasing weights over the bar. Now, next up is the car squat. But real quick, before that, I have to thank our sponsors at Garage Gym Life Media who are sponsoring this live stream. And we're going to let the founder, John Greaves III, tell you a little bit about what they're doing over there. You'll especially love it if you like some of the contest analysis I've done in the past. So you can learn about some of the folks that are putting it all together. Training at a home gym, especially if you're training by yourself, can be tough because sometimes you just don't have the motivation to go in your garage or your basement and get it done. And that's why we stream competitions every month on the Garage and Life Media YouTube channel. I'm John Grease, the third founder of Garage and Life Media. And after 20 years of training in a home gym, I can tell you that there are some days when I just don't feel like training. And those are the days when I put on some sort of training video or other strength-related content to give me the extra motivation I need to get in there and get it done. There is nothing more motivating than seeing people achieving their goals at a powerlifting meet or a strongman competition. And that's why month after month, we provide that content to you right there in the comfort of your own home on our YouTube channel. Plus, we leave it up forever so you can always just throw it on in the background anytime you need that extra dose of motivation to get you going. And that's why if you're not already a subscriber to Garage and Life Media, I invite you to take advantage of this opportunity to add this powerful training tool into your arsenal because I want you to succeed right there in the best gym in town. Coming in with one point last place on the uh, car squad, I have Evan Singleton, but he has surprised us on quite a few other events this year, so suddenly he might get much better at squats than we've seen in the past. Next, I have Jerry Pritchett taking three points on the car squat. Next up, I have Big Z also sharing three points on the car squat. Again, he may show us some uh, revitalized activity and do better than this. We never know. Konstantin Janasha, I think, also comes in at three points on the car squat. And again, this is for reps. Kevin Ferris, a good squatter, I think will pick up seven points here. So sort of mid-packish. Uh, for him, and then moving up, Adam Bishop. I went back pretty far in his history on Strongman Archives and couldn't find any squatting in competition, which is always preferable when you're doing prediction videos, and I uh, gave him seven points as well. We then have Gabriel Pena. I have him sharing that seven-point range as well. And then Gabriel Rayom, 2021, Canada's Strongest Man, had a 310-kilogram squat for three reps, which was good enough for 10.5 out of 17 points. At that competition, he tied with Maxime Boudreau, so I gave him seven points there, and uh, for the same reason, Maxime also seven points. We saw what Maxime could do at World's Strongest Man, and so he and Gabriel, I think, kind of together there, seven points apiece. Next up on the list, Bobby Thompson has a share of what I think a, a lot of guys will get 12.5 points, and we'll see them all. So Bobby at 2020 World's Strongest Man and his group tied for first in the group with 11 reps at 318 kilos. I think that's good enough for 12 and a half points. And the other guys I have at 12 and a half points are Graham Hicks, who was uh, second place in his group with 10 reps at 2020 World's Strongest Man. Mikhail Shivlikov, who uh, at this year's squat for reps did 10 reps. Like uh, only JF Crone, I think, did better than that. So 12 and a half points also to Trey Mitchell, who had 2020 World's Strongest Man in his group, did 318 kilos for 11 reps. So I think Trey has a share of that 12 and a half points, as does Ivar Smokstellas. This year's World's Strongest Man, he did 10 reps, as did Brian Shaw and Mikhail Shivlikov. So second best there. Very, very good squatters. And uh, we mentioned the man. Here he is again, the host of the Shaw Classic 2021, Brian Shaw himself. I think we'll also take a share of that 12 and a half points, very, very close to the top of the rankings here. So he did 10 reps at this year's World's Strongest Man. And then I think uh, they're all defeated by only one man, JF Caron, who uh, will walk away with the 16 points and win the car squat at the uh, Shaw Classic 2021. Next, we'll talk about the Hummer Tire Deadlift. 
The Hummer Tire deadlift was the marquee event of last year's Shaw Classic. It brought lots of excitement. J.F. Caron won, and Jerry Pritchett did all he could to match that new world record. I hope that it's as exciting as it was last year this time around. So let's have a look at the Hummer Tire deadlift, I think that coming in last place there will be Gabriel Rayom, Canada's strongest man. He will walk away with two points and also a share of that two points, I think will go to uh, Maxime Boudreau, who at the 2020 Shaw Classic was two out of 10 points on the Hummer Tire deadlift. Not one of his best events. Yoke and deadlift are things that he's constantly improving on. Really, really good at, but not compared to world-class athletes as of yet. Uh, Ivar Schmuckstellas, I think, also takes a share of that two points on the Hummer Tire deadlift. His max deadlift at 2020 World Strongest Man was only good enough for two and a half out of 10 points. And I think Big Z comes in in the next range, so four and a half points. At 2018 Wuss Dubai, he did a 460 kilo 18 inch deadlift, which is uh, pretty impressive, but not top world class against these type of guys. Kevin Ferris, I think, takes a share of that four and a half points as well. At 2020 Shaw Classic last year, he was four out of 10 points with 445 kilos. Brian Shaw, the host of the event, I think will be the next range up. So I think he comes away with six points here on the next higher weight. 472 kilos is what he did last year at the Shaw Classic 2020. Moving up the list, Konstantin Janasha is typically in the top 80% of guys he competes against in deadlift for reps. This is for max though, and it is a hum Hummer tire um, height. So it's a little bit different than a nine inch. I give him seven points here. We then move up to the next tier, the next higher tier, and Evan Singleton showed incredible things at the World Open recently, doing uh, 453.5 kilos, and from what I've heard from Laz and Liz, if you count the collars, it was a full thousand pounds, so a thousand pounds to Evan Singleton, ten and a half points, and I think he's going to share that with quite a few other guys here, including Jerry Pritchett, who I think won't surprisingly come in second place this time around. I think some of the lingering injuries, maybe he's passed them, maybe he's not, I'm going to go with most of the way there, but not quite. So Jerry will walk away with still a respectable 10 and a half points here. Moving up the list, I think Adam Bishop also comes away with 10 and a half points on the Hummer Tire deadlift. Last year's Shaw Classic, he did 490 kilos and he's had various different deadlift, uh, impressive deadlifts uh, recently, including the World Open where he set a PB at 453 and a half kilos. You then go to Graham Hicks, who I think also hits 10 and a half points here. He had 11 out of 13 points at 2019 Britons on deadlift for reps, but he's been doing some great stuff with Max recently as well. Mikhail Shivlikov, a uh, deadlifting legend, really, uh, gives more effort than almost anybody else, and I think he walks away with a share of that 10 and a half points as well. Trey Mitchell, I think, will also walk away with a share of that 10 and a half points, doing slightly better than even his great performance last year at, uh, at the Shaw Classic. And then you have Gabriel Pena, who also pulled 453 and a half kilos at the World Open recently. But this being a Hummer Tire deadlift, Gabe has trained different kinds of deadlift. They're not all, in fact, I thought the nine inch deadlift was maybe his worst type of deadlift. He's done stuff with tires before. He's done hex trap bar deadlift. So he's uh, more accustomed, I think, to the stranger or more creative types of deadlifting than maybe some of the other guys might be. Gabe will be the next tier up 14 and a half points, very, very, very near the top. And then uh, sharing that 14 and a half points is Bobby Thompson. So I think um, these are the two guys now that come in second place, as opposed to how Jerry Pritchett did last year. And first place even being at 90% there, I think JF Caron still wins it again. It won't be another world record, but he'll be good enough to win this again for 16 points. So that's the lineup and the predictions for the Shaw Classic 2021 Hummer Tire Deadlift. Let's hope it's as good as it was last year, because I was out of my seat last year. Next up, the wheelbarrow and arm over arm medley. Once again, if you are enjoying this uh, detailed breakdown and analysis of all the competitors' events and what points they will get, and in terms of predictions for the Shaw Classic 2021, I will encourage you again to watch all the way through when I do reveal my podium finishers. So moving on to the wheelbarrow and arm over arm medley. It is pushing a wheelbarrow full of sandbags a given distance and then getting down, sitting down, and doing an arm over arm pull to raise, it looks like a frame that you would typically carry, raise it up in the air, and so that's your medley. So who's going to come in last place here? I think it's Trey Mitchell, and it's because um, the wheelbarrow portion does involve some bit of grip, which is has been a little bit of a deficiency or area of opportunity for Trey in the past, but it isn't a strict 
rib event, so I might be totally wrong on this one. I think next will be two points to Graham Hicks. So Graham, um, I looked at folks farmers because you can't really find a lot of wheelbarrow experience in their competitions. So I went by uh, Graham's farmers ability in past competitions and I think he gets two points. Konstantin Janash, I think, comes away with three points here. And where folks did uh, flag hoists in certain competitions, I tried to include those here because that will be uh, very similar to the arm over arm lift or pull that is happening at the Shaw Classic 2021. We then have Adam Bishop, who at the uh, 2020 World's Strongest Man, his farmers were, you know, not so great. At last year's Shaw Classic, his farmers were mid-pack. Uh, at the Wuss 2021 Strength Island, his flag hoist was bottom, um, only four out of 15 points, so four points to Adam Bishop here. Lots of uh, lots of evidence there. Gabriel Pena has um, some different experiences here. Uh, 2020 World's Strongest Man Farmers, not so good. So I'm going to give Gabe five points. He's not necessarily the best with grip events, still working on improving those. Gabriel Rayom, I think, will come away with six points in this event. And then I have Ivar Smokstellis, who, again, struggled a bit in some of his contests with Farmers, but did very well on the flag hoist in 2021 Wuspa Rain. So if he can get through the wheelbarrow and get to the arm over arm, I think that portion worked well for him. Seven points to Ivar. Ours. We then uh, move up the list, and I think Big Z is a Junior Sabiscus mid-pack year, comes away with eight points here based on some of the experiences he has at Europe's Strongest Man, uh, doing very well in the Farmers, um, winning the Farmers at Baltic Strongest Man, although that's not international competitors, and then Arm over Arm, he's not as great. Again, that was 2018 Wuss Dubai, only five out of 12 points there, so Big Z may be better on the wheelbarrow portion than the Arm over Arm portion. We then move up the list, and I think Bobby Thompson walks away with nine points here. So he will, uh, at 2021 Wuss Strength Island, he was 10 out of 15 points on the flag boy, so decent points there. Then I think 10 points go to Mikhail Shivlikov. So he's been good with farmers uh, a variety of different times, truck pulling and, and, and all sorts of different things, as you can see the evidence here. Kevin Ferris, I think, walks away with 11 points. Last year's Shaw Classic, he did 8 out of 10 points on the Farmer, so very well there. It'll just be up to how well he does in the wheelbarrow. He has good grip as well, extremely good grip. So I think this kind of medley suits him if his bulk is enough to get that wheelbarrow going. 12 points, I think, go to JF Caron. So at last year's Shaw Classic, he was 6 out of 10 points on the Farmers. And at this year's Worcester Strength Island, he did very well on the flag hoist, 12 out of 15 points, I think. This uh, suits JF very well as well, and he has some more bulk, more than Kevin does in terms of getting the wheelbarrow going, so I edged him up a bit. Maxime Boudreau, a complete savage when it comes to moving events. Uh, at last year's Shaw Classic, 9 out of 10 points on the Farmers, and he just gives all of his effort. Uh, he is coming in with a broken finger, but the guy just ignores pain and keeps on moving. Uh, that's kind of his mantra. So 13 points to Maxime, 14 to Jerry Pritchett, who was who won the Farmers last year at the Shaw Classic. And then I think uh, the host himself, Brian Shaw, starts to make his presence felt as we walk through these events. And we are now at the sixth event out of eight, where you can see him winning or being near the top in my predictions and most of these. And this is where he really starts to make his dominance felt. Brian walks away with 15 points, the runner up in the wheelbarrow arm over arm. So who does that leave? I think Evan Singleton's gonna win the wheelbarrow arm over arm. Uh, he won the carry and drag at the 2021 World Open. And if you think about it, there are lots of similarities there between that and this. And so I think Evan wins it. So that's the predictions for the Shaw Classic 2021 wheelbarrow and arm over arm medley. Next up is the Circus Dumbbell. With Alexei Novikov out of the competition due to a concussion sustained at the altercation at the World Open, I think we all think and believe that Brian Shaw is going to win the Circus Dumbbell, but where will everybody else place? Well, I have Gabriel Rayom coming in. Uh, I think he's going to zero it. Although, when he zeroed it, it was 2018 Canada's Strongest Man, not very recently, but I don't have any other evidence to suggest otherwise. I think Jerry Pritchett, who struggled at last year's Shaw Classic with a zero on the Circus Dumbbell, won't zero it this year, but still bottom pack, three points for Jerry. Five points to Trey Mitchell, who had two reps at last year's Shaw Classic, which was good enough for four and a half points there. I think Konstantin Janasha, who's had his ups and downs with Circus Dumbbell and that injury that he sustained, will come away with five points. I think Mikhail Shivlikov will share the five points at 2021 Wuspa Rain. He was four out of 15 points, so a lower pack there as well. Gabriel Pena hasn't done them since Amateur Worlds, was very good there, but again, they were amateur, not pro worlds. 
I say that Gabriel's the next tier up, though. He's going to get seven points here. Same for Kevin Ferris. At last year's Shaw Classic, he managed two reps, which was good enough for four and a half points. But I think he gets a little bit more points here because he was really close to two more lockouts last year, which would have put him really high up in the point standings. I'm going to give him credit for being able to do at least one more rep than he did last year. Seven points for Kevin Ferris. I think Maxime Boudreau ties there as well for seven points, although Max has practiced quite a bit on Circus Dumbbell and may do a little better than this. Um, and then we move up to Graham Hicks, who I think comes away with 11 points, and we're getting up to the high point scorers here. I think Adam Bishop also will come away with 11 points last year at the Shaw Classic. He was 7 out of 10 points. Did very, very well with Circus Dumbbell. Uh, Big Z, I'm going to say, takes a share of that 11 points as well. His overhead pressing power is legendary. Bobby Thompson, same thing. He's making his own overhead pressing legend for himself at this year's Wood Strength Island, Bahrain. He was 11 and a half out of 15 points there. Six reps on a 100 kilogram dumbbell, so he walks away with 11 points. I think JF Corona also scores 11 points. He, ha he was 8 out of 10 points at last year's Shaw Classic, has proven that he's very, very good with circuit dumbbell. And then Ivar Smokstel is the next tier up, the next uh, number of reps up. I think he walks away with 14 and a half points. He did 14 out of 15 points at this year's Wuss Bahrain, eight reps with 100 kilogram circus dumbbell. Then we move up to the other share of that 14 and a half points, which I think goes to Evan Singleton. Uh, the 2019 Giants Live World Tour Finals, he was third out of 13 guys, did seven reps with 100 kilos, and like I said, he's been improving at every event all along since then. I think he's definitely there. And then our winner, uh, I think it's going to be the host again, Brian Shaw, as we mentioned. Um, without Alexei Novikov and without the return of Kieliuszkowski yet... Uh, Brian's the best circus dumbbell lifter in the world. There's no doubt about that. He wins this event. So again, for those of you who are enjoying all this, make sure to uh, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, put a bunch of your comments down below, whether they're good or bad. I'll be uh, happy to receive them all. And on we go to the last and final event, the Atlas Stones. And so the bottom of the pack in the Atlas Stones for me is Bobby Thompson. He's known for not being great at Atlas Stones, working on them all along. But I think in this uh, group of guys, difficult for him to come up above that placing. Big Z is Adrunas Sabiscus. Uh, I have him coming in with two points. 2018 was Dubai. He had three out of 12 points. Uh, Jerry Pritchett at the Shaw Classic last year was two out of 12, out of 10 points, sorry. Maybe a cardio thing. Not sure if the uh, elevation there was an issue, but three points going to Jerry Pritchett. Uh, I predict that Kevin Ferris will walk away with four points this year. He had three at last year's Shaw Classic, but more guys this time, more points to go around. I then think Mikhail Shivlikov will come away with five points. So at the 2021 Giants Live World Open on the lighter set of stones, he was two out of ten points. Not very good there, and, uh, you know, middle of the pack in some other competitions. Gabriel Pena did well in the World Open for someone who hadn't done a Giants Live show yet. He was 4 out of 10 points, so decent, and you know, he will continue to improve. But for now, a little better than that, 6 points for Gabriel Pena. I think Konstantin Janasha, after World Strongest Man 2021, where he was mid-pack, 5 out of 10 points on the Stones, will come away with 7 here at the Shaw Classic 2021. Then we have, moving on up, Ivar Smokstelis. Eight points. So at the Giants Live Strongman Classic, he was six out of 11, kind of mid pack there. I think he comes away mid pack, eight out of 16 points here. We then have Gabriel Rayom, who I think will come away with nine points. Again, he's 2021 Canada's strongest man. He was 16 out of 17 points in that competition, but he didn't get the last stone. Uh, Maxime, incidentally, had was, won that event, 17 out of 17, and Maxime is a monster on stone. So Adam Bishop, I think, comes away with 10 points here. The uh, Giants Live World Open, he won that event, but it was a lighter set of stones. So I wanted to give him enough credit and a good number of points, but not winning the event because that was the lighter set. So lighter set of stones, speed really, really favors Adam, but those won't be the stones that we're using here, I'm fairly certain. Bram Hicks, I think, comes away with 11 points. So at 2020 Europe's Strongest Man, he was eight out of 12 points there, a very good stone lifter. Then moving up, I think J.F. Carone starts to show us the upper tier of the stone lifters. At last year's Shaw Classic, 8 out of 10 points there, came very, very near the top. And I think he comes 12 out of 16 this time around. We then have Trey Mitchell, renowned Atlas stone lifter. Last year's Shaw Classic, he was second place only to Brian Shaw, 9 out of 10 points there. In fact, it was Brian, Trey, J.F. last year. So I think Trey Mitchell gets 13 out of 16 points. Very close to the top this time around as well. Maxime Boudreau, 
has improved his stones immensely, showed that in World's Strongest Man 2021, where he actually got his placing between Brian and the winner, Tom Stoltman, in that event. So um, he does have the broken finger, but I think Maxime will do very well here. He, he knows how to push through like no other. So 14 points to Maxime. Um, and then moving up, Evan Singleton, his stone lifting has been incredible in the two Giants live events that we've seen this year. He's gone from not being a good stone lifter to being one of the best stone lifters in the world. And uh, I think he comes away with 15 points here. So that leaves us with the host of the show, Brian Shaw. He will not be defeated on Atlas Stones um, again, like Maxime beat him at World's Strongest Man. I think Brian um, definitely takes it this time around with Maxime hot on his tail, but Brian takes the 16 points on the Atlas Stone. So those are all of the events, the breakdown of every event, every competitor, every point I expect every competitor to get at the Shaw Classic 2021. So now, for all of you who have been very patient and watched all the way through, you want to see the final standings and especially the podium. So here we go. Starting off in 16th place, I have Kevin Ferris with a total of 44 and a half points. We then move up and maybe a surprise to some, I have Big Z coming in 15th place with a total of 46 points. Maybe some of you may have him higher. Let me know in the comments below if you disagree. 14th place, I think, goes to Gabriel Rayom uh, with 47 and a half points total. And then 13th place to Jerry Pritchett, 50 and a half points. We then go to Konstantin Janasha in 12th with 56 and a half points. 11th place, I think, goes to Gabriel Pena, who's been doing great things recently in a variety of different events, 59 points for him. Going into the top 10, I think 10th place goes to Mikhail Shivlyakov, the deadlifting machine, 64 points for him. Then 9th place, I think, is for Adam Bishop, uh, 64 and a half points for Adam Bishop. I have been rating him a little lower than he's actually been performing recently, so we'll see what happens in this contest. Uh, Eighth place in the Shaw Classic 2021, I think, will go to Bobby Thompson with 67 total points. Seventh place to Ivar Schmockstellis with 69 points. And in the top six, I think Maxime Boudreau comes in sixth place with 73 points, followed by fifth place Trey Mitchell, 76 points for him, doing very well across most of these events. So fourth place, I think, will go to Graham Hicks if he's fully healed. 78 total points to Graham, and here's the drum roll for your... Shaw Classic 2021 predictions for the podium. So the Shaw Classic 2021 podium is number three, Evan Singleton with a total of 93 points, securing the podium by quite a few points there. And then number two, I have the incomparable J.F. Caron, 98 and a half points for him in second place. And that leaves the winner, the host, the gracious host. Thank you so much for putting all this together. Brian Shaw, I think wins this contest with 104 total points across the eight events. Um, and then the question arises, did he devise these events to be in his favor? Not at all. Um, I think if you look through all of the events, it's a very good uh, disbursement of things that measure all kinds of different strength. And if anything, the only thing I can think of that he missed is some sort of loading event. But besides that, he has everything covered. He has creativity covered. He has different measures of strength covered and does not at all try to favor himself. Um, in fact, he would probably take out the Hummer tire deadlift and the uh, the max log if you were trying to do that. So thanks again for joining me on My Block Strongest Man. I hope you enjoyed this detailed analysis and research and I hope you analytic geeks out there love what you've seen here today. If you have, like, subscribe, hit the bell button for all notifications, come back for more and uh, consider uh, donating a super chat if you really like my stuff next time I do a live stream. Really would appreciate that. It uh, really helps me out quite a bit. So thanks again for joining. Let's go uh, join the Shaw Elite Club, watch the contest, and reconvene here when it's all over to discuss what happened. And of course, as always, until next time. Ciao, homie.